Welcome back to another episode of Daily Neville. I am your host, Josiah Brandt, and Daily Neville is all about breaking down the teachings of Neville Goddard, making them easy to understand, easy to digest, easy to apply in 20 minutes or less. I designed Daily Neville to fit seamlessly into your daily diet of high vibe consciousness nutrition. So go ahead and subscribe to this channel so that you get the next episode tomorrow. Today, we're continuing with Neville's 1942 book, Freedom for All, a practical application of the Bible. And this is a continuation of the last episode, which started chapter four, The Secret of Feeling. In The Secret of Feeling, Neville is describing the biblical story of Esau, Isaac, and Jacob. Isaac, the blind father, wants to give the birthright blessing to Esau, the first son, the hairy child who is sent hunting. Now, we understand through Neville's interpretation here that Esau represents your sensory impressions, your five senses which interact with the 3D material world. So this is a recipe for creation. We send those five senses hunting, meaning that we go into the silence. We go within, we lay down, we enter the state of floating. We dim the evidence of the senses. We stop paying attention to them for a while. And then we allow the smooth-skinned son, Jacob, to take on the impression of feeling. So from the story, Jacob kills a goat, one of the kids of the goat, dresses it, takes the hairy skin of the goat, places it over him, and then goes to Isaac and fools Isaac into giving him the right of birth. So we know that Jacob is the second son, which is basically the ideal or the imaginary state, also seeking the right of birth. But in order to do so, it must fool the father. It must fool the father. And by fool, we simply mean it must convince the father that it is real. And so this is a recipe for creation because basically what Jacob does is Jacob presents the feeling that he is real in a way that allows Isaac to give the right of birth, the blessing of the right of birth to Jacob. Now, Isaac is your consciousness. Esau are your five senses. Jacob is the second son or the desired state. You send the five senses or whatever your current world is, you put that to sleep for a while. And you allow Jacob to come close to you. Come near my son that I may feel you. You allow your Jacob, your son, to come close to you in a way that allows you to feel as real that which you desire to give the right of birth to in your world. And this is the metaphysical secret encoded in this scriptural story. Now, Neville's going to take these ideas, he's going to break them down into three distinct steps so that you can mimic that what is told you in the scriptures to do the truth that sets you free, meaning this gives you truth and freedom to experience what you desire to experience in your life. So continuing here with Neville's words, in chapter four of Freedom for All, a practical application of the Bible, the secret of feeling. Neville continues, he says, you have fixed a definite psychological state, which in spite of all opposition or precedent, will objectify itself, thereby fulfilling the name of Jacob, which means the supplanter, right? The supplanter coming after, but overruling the second son, which takes the birthright from the first, the supplanter. Here are a few practical examples of this drama. First, the blessing or making a thing real. Sit in your living room and name a piece of furniture, a rug or a lamp that you would like to have in this particular room. Look at that area of the room where you would place it if you had it. Close your eyes and let all that now occupies that area of the room vanish. In your imagination, see this area as an empty space. There is absolutely nothing there. Now, Begin to fill this space with a desired piece of furniture. Sense and feel that you have it now here in this area. Imagine that you are seeing this piece of furniture, that which you desired to see. Continue in this consciousness until you feel the thrill of possession. Second example. The blessing or making of a place real. You are now seated in your apartment in New York City, contemplating the joy that would be yours if you were on an ocean liner sailing across the great Atlantic. 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Your eyes are closed. You have consciously released the New York apartment, and in its place, you sense and feel that you are on an ocean liner. You are seated in a deck chair. There is nothing around you but the vast Atlantic. Fix the reality of this ship and the ocean so that in this state, you can mentally recall the day when you were seated in your New York apartment, dreaming of this day at sea. Recall the mental picture of yourself seated there in New York, dreaming of this day. In your imagination, see the memory picture of yourself back there in the New York apartment. If you succeed in looking back on your New York apartment without consciously returning there, then you have successfully prepared the reality of this voyage. Remain in this conscious state, feeling the reality of the ship and the ocean. Feel the joy of this accomplishment. Then open your eyes. You have gone and prepared the place. You have fixed a definite psychological state. And where you are in consciousness, there you shall be in body also. Okay. This is brilliant. I'm going to draw your attention to some of the things that he says here in example two that are absolute diamonds. This is the secret of reality itself. This is the source code. This is hacking the source code of reality creation itself. And it's incredibly important that you understand this. The key aspects of this imaginal picture are to be able to leave where you are physically now in your imagination and travel and arriving there turn around and look back on being here without coming back. Go there, look back on being here as though it were a memory. You're basically creating a false memory, which again is fooling the father, right? Come close my son that I may feel you. You're being Jacob. You're supplanting. You're creating a false memory by, by fooling the father into giving the right of birth. So you're going there. You're looking back and remembering the time when you did this. Even though you're doing it right now, you're creating a memory of doing it and you're remembering that you did it while you're at sea in this example or while you're wherever you desire to be in this example, you're saying, wow, I'm here now. I can remember when I planted this picture. This collapses the quantum field in a very specific way. This is a science. There's a science behind this. Now, our modern science that we have right now doesn't fully understand it yet, but the mystics do. This is a mystic revelation, and it's all portrayed to us so simply in this story of Esau, Isaac, and Jacob in the Bible. And it's told over and over again. There's so many stories in the Bible that are conveying the same secret. This is a recipe, and it was given to us in a way that would transcend generations and be passed down for posterity because it's the truth that sets man free. And our ancestors wanted us to know. Continuing with Neville's words, here's the third and final example. The blessing or making real of a point in time. You consciously let go of this day, month, or year, as the case may be, and you imagine that it is now the day, month, or year which you desire to experience. You sense and feel the reality of the desired time by impressing upon yourself the fact that it is now accomplished. As you sense the naturalness of this time, you begin to feel the thrill of having fully realized that which you, before you started this psychological journey in time, you desired to experience at this time. So you're moving in time. We've already learned how to move in space. We've already learned how to possess an object. Now we're literally learning to time travel using our consciousness. We literally move in time to a point in time and then we feel the thrill of being there and feeling the thrill of having fully realized what we desire to realize at that time. The applications for this are, there's so many, there's so many things you can do with this. I'm going to give you a few. 
imagine that you work for a business and there is a end of the year business party where they recognize the top leaders in the business. You can travel to that point in time where you are there and then by releasing the here and now. And in that moment there and then, you can feel the thrill of being recognized as the top income producer or the top sales leader or the top whatever your metric of success is being recognized for that at your business meeting. Do you understand the gold that this is? This is treasure. Understanding how this works, this is treasure. You can literally plant into the source code of reality itself events that you desire to experience. This is manifestation at its finest. And in the final paragraph of this chapter, Neville writes, with the knowledge of your power to bless, you can open the doors of any prison, the prison of illness, the prison of poverty, or even of a humdrum existence. Humdrum, boring. Prison of a boring existence. How could you be bored when you know your creative power? The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those that are bound. And so it is, my friends, so it is the truth that sets us free, freedom for all. Powerful, powerful revelations here from Neville Goddard. That concludes this episode of Daily Neville. In the next, we're going to talk about the mystical secret of the Sabbath. Till then, imagine wisely, my friends, and I will see you all in the next.